Return to Castle Wolfenstein is a first-person shooter video game published by Activision. It was released first on PC in 2001, Linux and Mac in 2002, then on the Xbox and PlayStation 2 in 2003. On PC, Mac, and Linux, the game is called Return to Castle Wolfenstein, whereas on the PS2, it's subtitled Operation Resurrection and Tides of War on the Xbox. The game was developed by Grey Matter Interactive, while the online component was developed by Nerve Software. ID Software, the creators of the first Wolfenstein game, titled Wolfenstein 3D, oversaw the development of the game and were credited as the executive producers. Return to Castle Wolfenstein is a remake of the original game, so a clean slate. In the German version of the game, it avoids making direct references to the Nazi party in order to comply with strict laws in Germany. The player is not battling Nazis, but a secret organization called the Wolves. Let's talk about the menus. The Xbox and PS2 are completely different. Different subtitle names and different backgrounds. If anyone was just to see these two screenshots, they would just assume that they are different games, but they are mostly the same. The PC game is a completely different menu as well, and no subtitle text. Just return to Castle Wolfenstein. Also, the HD mod has its own menu and name as well. They call their game the Real RTCW. Also, this is a good time to mention the PlayStation 2. It's the only version that doesn't support widescreen resolution. Moving along, we can see that the PS2 is a lot darker and the detail and the textures are really compressed. The video cutscenes are generally the same on the two, except when it gets to the dead dude on the table. He is wearing a brown top and brown pants, but a black top and green pants in the PS2. And when the light flashes, you can see that it's a dark blue shirt without the suspenders. Bringing in the PC, we see that the PS2 looks more like the PC and the Xbox decided to update the visuals for the dead dude. Something else I noticed, the PC doesn't show any lightning light flashes on the walls or floors. Rolling the dial back a tad, the PC does show lightning, just like I said, no light glow on the floors and walls. This shot has all three doing some weird ragdoll movement. The Xbox and Windows are the same and the PS2 does its own little thing. The floor on the PlayStation 2 shows off more detail. Could be extra blood, or just dirt, either way, I think it looks better. Right after the first cutscene, the Xbox fades to black for a second and then immediately lets you dive into the game, whereas the PS2 has quite a long load time in between. There is a Mac and Linux version of the game, and to be honest, they look identical to the PC game. The Mac port was done by different developers, Aspire Media, while the Linux game was done in-house by Timothy Passet. Also, that's Timothy with two E's. Pretty weird. I personally use a Y with my Timothy, but, you know, that's just what my parents did. Like I said before, these ports look the exact same to the PC, as long as you match the game settings. And in this case, the Mac is at 1152 by 640 resolution. Also, I'm playing on a medium setting, so the graphics are a bit worse because I'm playing on a lower-end Mac PowerBook a G4 laptop. But even with my normal Windows version at Mac settings, the two are still pretty comparable. The modern one is very crisp and looks lovely. The PS2 and the Xbox doesn't look half bad. If I zoom in a lot on the Xbox and PS2, you can see that the PlayStation suffers from terrible aliasing. And we all know the PS2 can do better than this. It's just the developers not putting in the time to max out the console. This is where the two console versions differ the most. The Xbox plays exactly the same as the PC. When exiting this gate, the PS2 has a lot of extra stuff in here, but also, this is the only way you can progress the mission, right through this door. On Xbox, there is nothing in this cell. The way to progress the mission on the Xbox is to go up these stairs, and if you do that on the PS2, you'll just get to a door you can't open. PlayStation 2 offers some new areas to explore, and then the rest of the level that the Xbox and PC get is a different chapter on the PS2. So for the most part, the PlayStation 2 and Xbox are the same, but the Sony box does do some different things here and there with the level design. And at the end of each mission, you can upgrade your character by finding secrets scattered throughout the levels. On the Xbox, there is a sweet, sweet addition, which is two-player co-op. The second player plays as Agent 1, so doing this actually alters the storyline a tad since something bad does originally happen to Agent 1 in single player mode. 
Another point for the Xbox was the included online multiplayer mode. The PS2 didn't offer this function sadly, nor did it offer any local head-to-head -head either, just the single player campaign. Now don't blame the PlayStation 2 for that though, blame the developers. Oh yeah, and I nearly forgot, after completing the Xbox version, you unlock the original Wolfenstein 3D game. The biggest difference between the consoles versus PC is the consoles have a fairly long prequel mission set in Egypt where you go through tombs and fight mummies. It's a pretty great addition to the game's storyline. Comparing the outside a little bit, the Xbox has a beautiful sky where the PC is so dark and creepy. The PS2 is kind of in the middle, but also the PS2 doesn't have this mountain as high. You pretty much can't even see it. This scene shows smoke coming out of the chimney on the Xbox with the colorful sky and the PC with the darker sky and no smoke. If you look closer, the Xbox and PC have these windows and door in the same spot, but on the PS2, the door and the windows have swapped. Pretty odd, as this door does take you to the same room. Let's take a second to talk about the user interface. Each version is different with the ammo and the life bars. You might have noticed I mentioned a modded version a few times. That mod is Real RTCW. It overhauls the entire game by using a new renderer, expands the arsenal, rebalances the gunplay, and has new high quality models, textures, and sounds. You really won't see how much more it enhances this game in this video, as I haven't gotten too far into the game, but trust me, it's really good. It's even available on Steam. To find out more about this mod, click the link in the description. The reviews for the game are great for the PC and Xbox, but not so good on the PS2. But I do believe that is because the PlayStation 2 only offers the single player game. Look, at the end of the day, I'd say play any version because the game is just really fun. The PS2 offers some new gameplay elements and the original Xbox version offers new visuals, while the PC has the sharpest visuals with the highest resolution. There really isn't a wrong choice here. Pick it up, have some fun, and yeah. So subscribe to me, like my video, leave me a comment, and ring that bell. But please do like and subscribe. Have a good one, take it easy.